This next question will go to Congressman Messi. Changes in Social Security will undoubtedly be made. What changes do you think would work both economically and socially? First of all, we have to know that Social Security does not cost the deficit. It never has and it never will be. It must pay for itself. I would not support ever, ever uh, increasing uh, the age again for, in order to be eligible for Social Security. I would not reduce the benefits for Social Security recipients. The one thing that I would think would, could work and should work, because you see, there's a point in the year where uh, I don't have to uh, pay any more in Social Security because uh, of my salary. And uh, I think there should be, that cap should be raised. I think I should pay all year on Social Security. Why not? And that would set the stage for uh, paying into Social Security that is going to be challenged because you see there are so many baby boomers and there are even fewer workers uh, to offset the needs of those uh, baby boomers. But the idea that we would privatize Social Security has to be set aside and has to be taken off the table because you see if Social Security had been privatized and the stock market had turned inside out like it did in the past uh, few years, uh, individuals on Social Security would be penalized. Thank you. Mr. Rule. Well, again, here you have to ask the question, why in the first place would Congress want to take trust money and put it into the general fund? They can't control their spending. The way I understand it as a businessman, Every dollar I take in is a dollar that I can spend. Yes, on occasion there's a borrow, but it's still a dollar that I can spend. So why, here I'm approaching, I'm 55, I've gone through my life not expecting to receive a dime of Social Security. And today as I approach that age, and those of ages that I am are looking at Social Security that is broke along with Medicare. So to tell me that it hasn't contributed to the debt, I can't believe that because it's not going to be there for me. So it's a question of now how are we going to pay for it? How are we going to pay for all these liabilities? The liabilities of unfunded debt, Medicare, Social Security, 80 to 120 trillion dollars, folks. That's on the facts of future generations. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Mr. Rule. Okay, I, I, as a retired person, I think it's really, uh, I certainly support um, the pension rights and social security rights uh, that people who have worked all their lives uh, deserve and should have. And uh, we need to remember that social security was put into effect as a result of the demands of the people that back in the 1930s when this capitalist system was not protecting people, was not providing jobs, was not providing pensions for the elderly, and Social Security was put in as a very modest income uh, for elderly people. And we need to protect that, we need to expand it. And instead of attacking Social Security, why aren't we looking at these inflated CEO salaries? Why aren't we looking at all this money that goes to the banks? There's a lot of money out there, but it's all in the hands of the bankers and the corporations. So we need to turn that around. The people need to take over and take control of their economic estimate. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Mr. Judd, you get the next question first. What proposals do you support regarding undocumented or illegal immigrants? Well, my own family, I know the front door to America works. So I question our legislators in Washington who are tending that front door, why aren't they letting it work? And even we, the citizens of America, the fourth branch of government, I even question the business owners and those that hire illegals. Why are they not promoting these individuals to a better life and promoting the front door to America? It works? Is it broken? You bet it is. And since the last 
so-called amnesty program, we've seen a government fail us, the citizens of America, who's created victims on both sides of the border. Our government is taking away our prosperity because they're not doing their job, securing our borders. Now there are going to be some things that we need to deal with respectfully and with dignity with individuals. Am I for amnesty? No, I'm not for amnesty. Am I for promoting the front door? You bet I am. And I will stand tall with anybody that comes to this country and wants to make a better life for themselves. I encourage all of you, all of you to promote the front door to America. It works. I question those that are responsible for how that front door works. Thank you. Mr. Rule? Uh, as I indicated in my opening comments, uh, the Peace and Freedom Party does support immigrant rights. Um, we have to remember that we are all a nation of immigrants. We came here looking to improve our situation, and we don't want to close those doors. At least I don't want to see those doors closed. And I find it pretty curious that we have no problem with capitalists transferring their money overseas, transferring jobs overseas at will. Nobody complains about that. But what if you poor people try to come into the United States to improve their condition and everybody gets all upset? So I just always think um, of some of my Chicago students when they had their demonstrations. They had this big banner that said, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. So I think we need open borders, I need, think we need to encourage uh, immigration and allow workers uh, to work where they want to, uh, just, just like capitalists seem to be able to invest wherever they want to. Thank you. Well, I believe that we must honor our workers and immigrants that are here in this country are working for American companies, American businesses, American families. I believe we should have a path to citizenship that is laid out and clear and uh, to be followed. Uh, I also believe we should protect our borders because we need to know who's in our country and who's coming and who's going. But that can be done without dishonoring those who are here and working. And for our nation. And it is uh, the responsibility of employers to step up to the, their responsibilities of knowing who's in their workforce and uh, treating them fairly and uh, if they know they have an illegal worker in their workforce, then uh, they should not hire that person. There are fewer and fewer individuals crossing our borders today. <laughs> of our economy, uh, there's less and less work for anybody for them to do, and uh, when uh, things pick up, we want to make sure that employers know how they, and who they are hiring, and we must provide uh, a path to citizenship. There's no question about it. Thank you. I think we need to make sure that the government serves the people of the United States. In our system, it is serving the corporations, it's serving the rich. These wars we are fighting do not make ordinary Americans any safer, it does not protect our freedom. All that it does is protects the, the, the freedoms of multinational corporations to make profits anywhere in the world. And so uh, when we say we should get the government off our backs, I think we should take control of the government away from the corporations, away from the wealthy, and put it in the hands of the working people uh, around the country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I would end the war in Afghanistan, and I bring our troops 
the, uh, we brought the combat troops home from Iraq, but I bring all of our troops home from Iraq and, and our, uh, the, the private uh, companies that are over there that are, that are acting in a military way. Uh, I would do what, I would support smart security, which is legislation that I introduced many, many years ago. I would invest in these countries and it would be pennies on the dollar uh, in order to help them with their infrastructure, with their health care, with their governance, and, but it would not be militarily. It would be, uh, it would not be with bombs and, and guns. It would be with uh, sending non-governmental <coughs> workers over there. It would be uh, investing in, in their needs and making friends with them. And you cannot make friends with an individual when you're destroying their villages and when you're killing uh, civilians. Uh, we must be doing that, not just in Iraq and, and Afghanistan, but we have to do that around the world. Uh, then we won't be spending on defense uh, enough to protect the entire world and more than uh, most of the world governments government all together. Thank you. Mr. Jensen? I have to have a piece of question, please. Name one thing you could do to reduce the burden of the government on the people of America. Send me to Washington. <laughs> Why haven't we addressed the cost of our health care? 
On one hand, I'm sitting here looking at insurance companies telling us what our costs are going to be. And on the other hand, I have the government telling us what the costs are going to be. But what about us? They took us, the patient, the person that wants to purchase. Or maybe there's those that don't want to purchase. That are now being forced by government to purchase health care coverage. I'd like to know where that's at in the Constitution. We heard from Nancy Pelosi that we had to pass the health care to find out what was in it. <laughs> I'm still waiting to find out what's in it. I told you that. The confidence does not, does not give us this business owner. But I believe everybody should have, if they choose to, the coverage that they need. I live it firsthand. My wife lives it firsthand. But where did we get with this coverage? Competition? Tort reform? Why am I mandated that I have to purchase my insurance in the state of California? Why can't I go across state lines? Why can't I choose what's good for me based on my needs? Why is government telling me what I have to purchase? Let's redo it. Thank you. Mr. Rule? I don't know what part of single payer the President and Congress don't understand. As a socialist, again, I think we need to get all U.S. troops and mercenaries out of the Middle East, and we need to get U.S. health insurance companies out of health care. We spend more on health care than any other nation in the world, and we're somewhere below Albania, I think, in terms of the quality of the outcomes of our health care. So again, I favor a socialized system. I favor a single-payer health care system. I know that's not popular with some people in the United States, but the overwhelming majority of Americans want single-payer. And I think our politicians need to give it to them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rule. Mr. Judd, this question goes first to you. What is your view on the Second Amendment, and do you support America's right to bear arms? Of course I do. I support the Second Amendment. I think there's enough laws right now on our books with regulations, with gun control. I do question how our government views assault weapons. I think they need to take a lesson on the definition of what assault weapons are before they start regulating us. But I'm an avid hunter and I believe in safety. I believe in responsibility, and I believe in our Second Amendment rights. And it was put there for a reason. It was put there for you, the individual, to protect your home and your family, and God forbid, some government someday. Thank you. Mr. Uh, yeah, the Peace and Freedom Party has always supported uh, the Second Amendment. Uh, we also supported the right of, of black veterans to carry weapons, but that didn't protect them from being murdered by the police. <laughs> and that's what happened. So, again, Peace and Freedom Party supports the um, Second Amendment, and we support the enforcement of existing laws. Thank you. Congressman Wolfie? I support the Second Amendment, but I don't believe that it means that uh, every individual in this country can have an assault weapon, and uh, I believe that we need to have a regulation over who is qualified and should have an assault weapon, and I believe we should have training for us a gun is provided. Thank you. All right, the next question goes to Mr. Rule. What two specific things would each of you do to stimulate jobs in Sonoma and Marin County? The same thing that I would do to stimulate jobs all over the country. I think it is unclear thinking to think the capitalists create jobs. It is possible for the government 
to guarantee everybody a job. This is what happened back during the New Deal when the capitalist system simply collapsed and failed to provide jobs for people. So again, I think we need to guarantee every, a job for everyone that have, wants one. Thank you. Thank you. 